Good day, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel here in Nashville, Tennessee with your daily devotional. Reading a selection once again from Voices from the Past. These are Puritan devotional readings, and uh, I'm just really enjoying another book similar to this one. It's called uh, The Mystery of Providence by John Flavel. Um, one of the uh, highlights of, of which is to just talk about the way that God um, is engaged with his world and specifically with our lives. And that's just, you know, coming to realize that, I think, and coming to appreciate that more and more um, uh, both humbles us and at the same time provides us with a, a great deal of hope to know that our uh, good shepherd is watching over us and, and that he loves us and that he really does have our highest good in mind. Well, this particular writing begins with, um, and this is uh, taken from uh, Flavel's uh, collection of writings called Works, and it's book four. And um, it is, uh, he quotes uh, Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in you, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. And Flavel says this, It is not the vast bulk of an estate, but the vigilant care of divine providence that guards you from the stroke of ruin. I've got to read that again because I'm not sure we got it there. Let's see what he's comparing and contrasting here and what he's inviting us to understand about God. It is not the vast bulk of an estate, but the vigilant care of divine providence that guards you from the stroke of ruin. The providence of God around us is the solid basis of all sanctified and durable prosperity. So if we're looking for a sense of security in which we can rest, it will be in God's providence, uh, his careful eye upon those he loves. Uh, Flavel says, his providence enfolds all who bear his image in everlasting arms. He will advance you higher and secure you better than any noble birth or estate could ever do. Now, he's using terms, <clears throat> since he's from 17th century, he's using terms we're not particularly fluent with, estate. Um, uh, we don't think that way. Noble birth, most of us don't think that way either. So here is the 17th century man um, uh, who is conveying to us that our greatest sense of security won't be found in our lineage, what, what you know, noble birth we're born, <laughs> what line we're born into, um, nor will it be in having some huge estate, in other words, wealth, um, but it'll be, in God's providence, we can, we can rest. He will advance you higher and secure you better. That's where real security is to be found, right? The delight and pleasure resulting from the observation of divine providence is very great. A lot of delight, a lot of pleasure resulting from pondering providence. Okay, there you go. That, that's a mouthful right there, right? It will doubtless be a part of our entertainment in heaven to view with transporting delight how the designs and methods were laid to bring us there. In other words, looking over our shoulder once we get to heaven to see all of the things and sort of that the the eternal the eternal realm to be able to see with what meticulous care God shepherded us back to him to come to know him to be reconciled to him. And the, uh, it will doubtless be a part of our entertainment. I love it that he uses the word entertainment. Here he is from the 17th century. Uh, in heaven to view with transport, uh, with transporting delight, how the designs and methods were laid to bring us there. Providence not only brings you to heaven, it brings heaven to your soul now. Uh, maybe you're out there. Maybe you've, maybe you've, sensed some distance between yourself and God, or maybe you've just never felt close to God. And even in the reading of this, you're longing for him. You want to know him. And I joined Flavel in telling you, he's, he may be calling you. He may be drawing near to you. The question is, will you turn to him 
and draw near to him. God is providentially steering all to the port of his own praise and his people's happiness. Remember, he lived on an island, you know, the UK, England. And so everything for them is a, is a port, you know, it's where a ship comes in and ships go out, right? God is providentially steering all to the port of his own praise and his people's happiness while the whole world is busily employed in managing the sails and tugging at the oars with a quite opposite design and purpose. They promote God's design by opposing it, fulfill his will by resisting it, and enlarge his church by scattering it. They make the saints rest sweeter by making their condition so restless in the world. What a history we might compile as we trace the footsteps of providence along the way. Here it prevented, there it delivered, here it directed, there it corrected, here it grieved, and there it relieved. Here was the poison, there the antidote. This providence dispelled a dismal cloud, this one straightened, and that one enlarged. Here, a want, there, a supply. Words cannot express the delight we may find in such an employment. Oh, reader, what a life of pleasure you might live by noticing the ways of providence towards you. What a heaven upon earth you may have. Taste and see the glory of the study of providence. That's just remarkable. Um, these guys, they could write tomes on a subject like this. And matter of fact, I highly recommend if you don't have a copy of The Mystery of Providence by John Flavel, I think it's by a banner of trust publishers. And I think you can get it for like less 10 bucks or something. Um, it's a great read. Uh, I'm currently going through it uh, downstairs in my other library. Just just enjoying reading all about Providence from uh, uh, this wonderful man, John Flavel. And I encourage you to uh, do the same should you be uh, in some way your curiosity aroused about God's providence and His, the way he is involved in your life um, and, and the way he does things like uh, make the saints rest sweeter by, by sometimes making our condition restless, you know. Um, he says, what a history we might compile as we trace the footsteps of providence along the way. And we'll get to do that when we get home to be with the Lord. We'll be able to see all of that. Here he prevented, there he delivered, here he directed, there he corrected, here he grieved and there he relieved. Uh, here was the poison, there the antidote. As God allows the different things that come into our lives to come into our lives, uh, it's good to remember they always pass through in a set of nail-scarred hands as our Lord Jesus, the Good Shepherd, watches over his sheep. Let me pray for you today and for us. Lord God, uh, thank you for your watchful eye. Now give us watchful hearts, uh, and may we, with the eyes of faith, look for you in every uh, intersection that we come to today uh, in our lives, whatever, whether we're working or at play, um, whether we're creating or laboring, whatever we might be doing, Lord, may we look for you in each and every intersection um, uh, of life and especially in our relationships. And may you, Lord, pour your glory through our lives uh, that others might see Jesus in us, that others might uh, sense the the peace, the love, and the joy of Christ, the fruit of the Spirit uh, in our lives and be drawn to our adorable Redeemer in whose name we pray today. Amen and amen. God bless you. Daily Devotions with Pastor Jim Thomas is a resource of the Village Chapel in Nashville, Tennessee. If you find this daily devotional beneficial, leave a review and share it with friends and family. For more resources or to support our ministry, visit our website, thevillagechapel.com. Artwork for this podcast by Kim Thomas, music by Phil Kagey.